Previously on Food Biker, riders were finishing their breakfast and their final cups of coffee. Everyone was getting ready to hit the road for some beautiful Vermont backroad riding for the day. Even Toby the Border Collie was getting ready to ride, and note that even he wears goggles and a helmet. Meanwhile, Jesse and I had a lot to prep for the rally dinner that night. So show me what you got. What are we, uh, what are we doing tonight? We've got the St. Louis ribs. We're gonna first cut the silver skin off and then we're gonna add our rub and then we're gonna put them in the smoker and we're gonna let them smoke all day long. Nice. So when everybody gets back from their ride, uh -huh. they're nice and hungry. Make sure they're all happy. Beautiful. All right, so show me now what, what kind of ribs we have. These St. look like St. Louis ribs? St. Louis ribs. Okay. Exactly. Um, so basically this silver skin here, we're going to mm -hmm. just cut down and then we're going to pull it all off so when people are eating them later on, they don't get that skin in their mouth. Excellent. All right. So basically what we do is skin it down like that. Okay. Then I pull up on the ribs like the bone. Okay. To free it open. All right. And then we just pull it down like that. All right. Hand me a slab. Let me uh, there you go. see if I, for the technique here, that uh, it's going like this. There we go. Okay, good. Just so, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'll go up the rib a little bit like this just to get a little piece of it, of course, with the knife away from me. So again, you want to do a horizontal slash on the back side. Then you lift up a little bit of the membrane and then just pull. This is definitely one of those cases where practice makes perfect. And Jesse's got a lot of practice with this. Well, you totally look like a champ when it comes to the silver skin. If I ever am I having a barbecue, would you say 500 people, uh, you know, twice a week? Sure. Yeah, I think you kind of have that down. And then it's on to the rub. There are countless rub recipes out there. Odds are they're going to have salt, pepper, brown sugar, garlic powder, onion powder, and a bunch of spices in it. Although the differences between rubs are often pretty small, exact recipe proportions are often well-guarded secrets as it adds to the mystique. Frankly, I suggest you try perfecting your own pig powder. But whatever rub you choose, the key thing is to rub just enough on there to get it to stick. You can use less in the bottom of the ribs as there's less meat there. Okay. And then just kind of rub it over it. Mm -hmm. Flip it over. Yep. You don't want to have any clumps. Mm -hmm. So I actually sifted my rub earlier this morning just to make sure. Sometimes like brown sugar will clump up with mm -hmm. moisture. So I like to just sift it so it's not clumpy. And you don't want to put too much. You just kind of want to rub it so it okay. mixes in with that pork fat. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much it, just like that. Straight forward. All right, let's do it. Here's the thing about Yankee barbecue. Jesse makes barbecue all year round when the temperatures often plummet under zero degrees during the winter time. Unlike the typically warmer weather of the American South, you do what you can in chilly Vermont. And a lot of Northern chefs like Jesse use electric smokers in their kitchens and they just vent the smoke outside. Happy to be here today to yeah, kind of speed. It's like, this is great. I'm usually all by myself doing this stuff, so it's nice For to have a little Now again, you said 500 people twice a week, all <laughs> you. And you're growing vegetables. An acre of veggies. Man, you're, you're the busiest guy in Vermont. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, slow living, right? What do you mean, slow? This is <laughs> fast in order to get it done in time for dinner service. That's why we do the ribs, so they can sit in there and cook all day. A lot of people stress out. It's like, oh, if I don't start the day beforehand, it's not going to be any good. Well, that's, don't let, don't believe that hype. Yeah. So. But this will wind up being some excellent Yankee Q, and I wouldn't complain if I had access to an indoor electric smoker. Really makes a lot of sense. And this way you can have barbecue 365 days a year with minimum fuss while being able to attend to other kitchen duties. All right, so let's put this this guy in there. What rack do you like? You got it? Yep. Good. I do the top top two. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, not for any particular reason. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, I'm going to stack them right on top of each other so that fat goes down. We're going to okay. put a water pan right here. Right. And then I got a box over there. We're going to fill with some hickory wood chips. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put that box right on top of this little coil down there that's going to heat up. Cool. Let's get the, uh, the water bath and the hickory and everything rolling there. All right. That looks like my mailbox. The only difference is that there are no bills in it. So <laughs> I'm not quite exactly sure. This, so this looks like a small 
uh, you know, for a smoker box. Yep, exactly. Okay, that looks well loved. Yeah, and the coil's gonna, the heater coil's gonna go right in here. Oh, look at that, okay, cool. And then that'll heat the wood chips inside. Mm -hmm. Then when the top goes on, the fat's gonna drip down, so that's what the roof's for. So nice. So it doesn't get, get into the wood chips. Kinda looks like one of those covered bridges that I was riding on the way over He's here. He's got some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's why, okay. If the flood didn't take care of it. Yeah, that, well, the smoker will. <laughs> that's right. Okay. And I think this thing cooks ribs better than your mailbox. I sure hope so. <laughs> you know, otherwise there'll be a red flag that comes up and, you know, mailman comes. Anyway, uh, so, so what do we got here? This is a hickory, uh, now is that local? It's uh, from Maine. No kidding. Yep. All right. So here, let's pop this in here. All right. So it has, has that configure in there. So, so you're going to put that down low? Yeah, I'm going to put it down low. I'm going to put it right above the smoker. Okay. And that will also stop the fat from pouring all over this little wood box. Mm-hmm. Your covered bridge. Yeah, my covered bridge is gonna go right on the coil down there. Okay. And then we've got the water bath above it, and we got both ribs. After, I'm gonna turn it on 225 okay. for the first hour. Okay. And then I'm gonna let it sit, and then I'll turn it down to 220. For okay. Around 11 o'clock, 12, I'm gonna flip the ribs, and then we'll let them sit for the rest of the day till they're done. So what do you, now for the smoke in this guy? Is it gonna, where now are you gonna pipe oh, it yeah. out somewhere? <laughs> That's the interesting part. Okay. So now we're going to turn it on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start it at 225, turn the power on. That okay. starts the wood chips. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to open this window here. Okay. And we got these little PVC piping. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I so want one of these. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> And any moment now, the smoke's gonna start going right out the window. <laughs> Check your city ordinances and your landlord before you put one of these in, but it's a great idea. <laughs> Every house should have one. So let's see what happens after a couple hours. The incredible smell of low and slow cooking ribs teases you all day long, and it's tough to hang in there until dinner. Tune in next time as Jesse and I have more rally dinner prep to do here on Food Biker. Food Biker is a part of this complete breakfast.